brain leak. Live shave? No. No, I was sniffing it to see if it smelled like my balls. Oh, does it? No, it smells like nothing. Hmm. Did you shave Do your my balls? My balls smell like nothing? No, there's no way. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely no way. Hello, one and all, everybody out there in the internet. How's everyone doing? Ethan, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. We were just talking about what your balls might smell like, and I think that it's a good way to start the episode. Yeah. You I know what? In the edit, run that back. Show show what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Ball episode. Wow. Incredible content. In <laughs> See, it's not just on air. We're not doing it just for fun. No, this we is do all it we in our about. spare time. Yeah, <laughs> in our spare time. If you in our balls time. If you had to pick a smell for your balls to smell like, ooh, hmm? top ten ball smells. Welcome back to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> <laughs> in this list, we'll go over the top ten smells for your balls. <laughs> I because you don't want anything too like floral because that's like eh, it's a bit too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want it to be oh. like. Fresh cut grass. <laughs> Fresh cut grass is pretty good. What if you made it like smell like a sharpie? I was gonna say I want people to go near there, but do I? Oh well, what? I don't want to go around smelling like a sharpie. What's the most tantalizing smell? Hmm? I want to go around smelling like that smell right before rain. Ooh, your balls smell like. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's it's has a it has a name. Petrichor is Whoa. the smell of rain. Whoa. I want my balls to smell like Petrichor. Petrichor. I want my balls to smell like Gwyneth Paltrow's goop candle. <laughs> so you want your <laughs> balls to smell like her vagina. <laughs> yes, it's the perfect thing. <laughs> the perfect smell. What is, is she saying, here's the actual smell of my vagina? Or is it like, oh, the candle actually smells great. So vis-a-vis... Uh, -vis, I don't know. I'm I'm pulling it up right now because uh, it can't smell great. It either smells like soap or it smells like you know uh, vagina <laughs> yeast. Meat, <laughs> vagina meat orgasm. This smells. That's what like, the name of the candle is. This candle is seventy five dollars for a candle. <laughs> For a candle. Okay, here are the... That better light up my future. <laughs> here are the... Oh, it's sold out, so we can't even get to it. And you can't even get it because it only ships to U.S. and Canada. So... God damn it. Here are the the notes, if you will, of... The floral. Of the candle. What does it smell like? Citrusy, bergamot, geranium, cedar juxtaposed with... Damask rose and ambrette seed. I don't know what a single one of those smells like. <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing down there? I have no idea. Did she just run naked through a fucking forest and then was like, yeah, whatever smells end up on me? <laughs> I guess so. Put it in a candle. I mean, it's good marketing. We're talking about it right now. But that's it true. Just I. I wish she just had the labia to go out there and make it actually smell like it. Like just go a week unwashed, get that smell, get the scientists together, chemically compounded, and get that smell out to the public. We don't have merch yet, but what if for our first <laughs> merch drop we did candles that this smells like Sean's balls, this smells like Ethan's balls. And the candle is in the shape of like a big erect dildo. Yes. Well, maybe not. Maybe not that. I think we should make it normal candle shaped. <laughs> I think. I think normal candle shape because a dick shaped candle that smells like our balls. That's dangerous. True. <laughs> That's dangerous. I, I mean. didn't think about that. <laughs> I think normal candle shaped, and it's it's trapped in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> so no one can do anything with it. You have to slowly lower a match into there to light it. <laughs> On a string. Yes. Yeah, we could do balls candles. How hard could it be? Trying to get that specific smell. And like, it has to be the rancid smell. It can't just be like, oh, here's what my balls smell like. 
yeah, we day have, to day. We have after to go, shower. We have to go run a half marathon, and then they get the smell. Yeah, and my scent will be called uncut and unwashed, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. and unstoppable. Ah, oh, what would mine be called? So you, I you want don't... a smell that clears a room. I want like a candle to go off, and like all pets and mm -hmm. all animals within a five mile radius leave. Okay, is there a color to this candle? Or is it just normal? No, it's see-through. <laughs> it's completely transparent. It's like gel. Ooh, I think I want to go the exact opposite. I think I want mine to okay. be... I want my candle to be Vanta Black. <laughs> so it, it, not only does it permeate the room, it also absorbs all of the light <laughs> in the room. <laughs> you don't even know if the candle's on or not. Yeah, exactly. And then... Uh, Ooh, you should do it so that your smell balances out my smell. So that Ooh. if you get my candle, you're in for a world of hurt. If you get yours, it's way too much. So put them together. And no smell at all. Nothing. Perfect harmony. It's like Febreze. Oh, my gosh. It's, that's beautiful. That's poetry. That's what yeah. it is. And then, and then that drives th sales through the roof, doesn't it? Because they're yeah. like, because, because we could have some sort of slogan, like everything good comes in pairs or something i don't, I don't know you're better and with so words. do we <laughs> yeah and so people have to buy both candles mm. yeah and it could be like left ball right ball yeah oh, this should be like half a nutsack shaped <laughs> oh that would be sick actually and then you can put and them then together. when they burn the wax melts and you put them together oh this is genius this and then we find out and it's just shaped after our actual balls yeah do you think that that would hurt if you made a mold of your... No. No, because it doesn't have to be warm, does it? No. I don't know. You could make a mold of your balls pretty easy. Would you also... Yeah. I would do it with searing hot lava if I had to. <laughs> do you think that if you made a mold of your balls, you'd accidentally get... You'd accidentally dip too low and get, uh, get a little butthole, too? <laughs> what? He might. If you're dipping... Because it's, it's hard to... How do you... How if do you're you, dipping it in, you're not going to be like... Well, if you're trying to get the whole sack... Yeah, but you're not going to... You're going to be at like a little tilted forward to do that. I just to get so, maximum yeah. droopage. Hmm. You're not going to have your butthole anywhere near that. I'd be afraid of like... How do you keep the weenus away from that? I I would want... If we were doing... Uh, just to just to make sure we're on the same page. If we're, if we're doing ball sack molds, I think that we would... We should go into saunas beforehand to get maximum elasticity. Okay. You know? Just to, like, really let them hang low? Mm-hmm. Yes. And wobble to and fro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you throw them <laughs> over your shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> I think that that would be the best, the best way to go. You can, you can, we can melt the sort of wax or whatever we're molding the balls to in the sauna with us. Uh-huh. Perfect. That's true. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good bonding session. I think so too. I think I think a great bondage great. session. A great bondage session. <laughs> I want a full mold of what it's like to have a ball in my mouth. A ball gag. It's all like Rhett and Link style like videos where it's like we're doing this thing together. They got vasectomies together, but we get molds Ooh. of our ball sacks together. I like that a lot more. That title slaps. I think that that's so funny. Ethan and I molded our balls together. Yes. Is the perfect title for a video. Mm hmm I, I mean, 2024. We're on to something. 2024, the year of opportunity. The year of our balls. Yes. the fuck year the of dragon. The, the year of the ball. Yes. Fuck oh, it. Yeah. Fuck it. We ball. <laughs> <laughs> Ball is life. <laughs> Fuck it, we balls. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, this could be so cool because, you know, you you go off and do something real cool. And I say, I say, man, I want to get Sean something real special. We have those ball molds forever. I, yeah. I melt down, you know, a block of gold. <laughs> and I give you a... A golden mold of my balls. Solid door knocker right there. Oh, that would be sick. That would be I, so sick. 
wish my mailman had to come to my door every day and rattle off a pair of testes. <laughs> that would be so good. That would be so good. I love this idea. I think that this is a really good idea. And I <gasps> thought we max out with the toposode. No, the testosode. Sean, you've been painting. What? You've been painting <gasps> minis recently. You could yeah. you could paint the balls. I know how to shade it and put in some subtle highlights. I like your balls look better than they ever have. That would be amazing. Do you think we could get sort of like a soft, almost ball-like material? And then you could you could sew individual hairs into there if you wanted? Ooh. Mm -hmm. Now the the potential for this is starting to skyrocket. <laughs> Oh, Sean, I spent all my money last year on different subscriptions that I had, and I didn't realize I had all these subscriptions to different apps that I don't even use. And I bet, I had... I bet your family was sad because you didn't even get them Christmas presents because you didn't have any money. I couldn't. How could I? I spent too much on on my plant apps to keep track of when to water my plants, and I still didn't even water my plants. Did you find any subscriptions you forgot about, or any you paid twice for and didn't realize it? I don't even know how I would do that. You would go to Rocket Money. You would use Rocket Money to do it, and they can find the subscriptions for you and cancel them for you. There's so many things. I deleted a couple of apps off my phone. I had time over Christmas. I was like, I'm going to delete a couple of apps and consolidate my phone a bit. And then I was deleting some, and it was like, do you want to delete the subscription? And I was like, I was paying for this. <laughs> I don't what? use this. Why am I paying for it? Why am Rocket I Money can do money that for you. Useless. They can consolidate everything. They can save you money. Money. Wow. I, I heard through the grapevine. That Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year. Yeah. And you know how much that is with all those people? That's over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. That's money back Whoa. in your pocket. Now, you won't be getting the 500 million. That, that's total. That's all the people. Yeah, Come that's, on, that's be reasonable. all the people. Sorry. 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 So stop being stupid. Stop paying for apps that you don't use, subscriptions that are unwanted. You might even have double subscriptions and you don't even know. Yeah, Let it can even money. alert you. It'll alert you to an increase in a price and subscription as well. Mm hmm. Like all I got these, that like the all, other these day. all these services are now like, hey, we're going to start serving ads and we're going to charge you more. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. It's crazy. I don't, I don't like I, that either. I don't want to do it. I legitimately use Rocket Money because I I got it because I was like, how many? I was curious. I was like, how many subscriptions do I have to shit that I don't even use? Yeah. There were a lot. Turns but out then I got an alert the Ethan's other day. Ethan's house was on a subscription. Yeah. I've been paying I've been paying the bank that's what every a, month. That's what a mortgage house. is. It's a subscription for a house. <laughs> Damn. It's fucking stupid. I got a thing the other day, though. It was like, hey, Spencer's vet thing just went up. And, of course, I'm paying it because I love my boy. But otherwise, I wouldn't have known. Yeah. I wouldn't have known. So, like you're... you can go to rocketmoney.com slash brain. That's rocketmoney.com slash B-R-A-I-N. Brain. Go. Save money. Be good. Okay, here's a question. Um, Scope creep. And I know that there's only two people listening now at this point. Now, if you're a <laughs> real leaker, you're excited about this conversation. You've been listening the whole time. So, you know how when you paint minis, there's the figure itself, but then um, you were telling me the last time that I was there that you do, like, the base, and you put, like, sand, and you put little fake bushes yeah. and stuff like that. What would be mm. the base of the ball sack? If you Ooh. were to put it on a little on a little base... What would be what would be surrounding the balls? Oh, that's see, that's what you want to go for. Is like, do you make it seem like giant testicles in like small town? <laughs> so you put like <laughs> tiny house. You put like a house around the balls, so the balls are just sitting in a house, all destroyed. <laughs> Many bricks and planks everywhere. That's so funny. So it's like Godzilla's testicles are coming through. You put like a little fence, but the fence is kind of like splintered off and yeah. little lawn. <laughs> there's, there's tiny little soldiers shooting up at the balls. <laughs> <laughs> a little family running away. <laughs> that would work. That would work. Oh, I want to make that now. It's so funny. Where yeah. would you display that? In the Louvre. 
Ah, oh, <laughs> the only place. The only right place next to Mona Lisa. Lisa. Right under Mona Lisa. Yeah. I think that more people would be pumped. I've heard that people go and see. Have you ever seen the Mona Lisa? No. I've heard it's like, oh, yeah, that's the Mona Lisa. It's also like smaller a than, a lot, than a lot of people yeah. think. It's also yellower than it should be. Apparently the varnish is like so old that it's just making the whole picture look brown and yellow now. But actually the original is supposed to have had color in it. Hmm. Or did the Mona Lisa, did Mona Lisa have jaundice? <laughs> we'll never know. Unless the entire background had jaundice as well. Or scurvy. Do you turn yellow with scurvy? Or do you get jaundice from scurvy? I don't know. Oh. Jamie. Pull jaundice. Up. Why is jaundice smell part of it? Jaundice is the yellowing of the skin, mucous membranes, and the whites of the eyes. Underlying mm. condition or health concern that involves the liver. So nothing got to do with scurvy. Doesn't have anything to do with scurvy. Okay. What does jaundice uh, smell like? I don't know. Scurvy is just a vitamin C deficiency, which I love that it's called scurvy. I I love that. I because it makes you think of pirates. But yeah. Just like the word, not because pirates got scurvy, because they, I mean, they did get scurvy, but it's like, damn, what a pirate word. It's like it's it's kind of like similar to lisp. Where it's like, why'd you have to put an S in the thing that they can't yeah. say? In the, so the people can't in, say it. In the word. It's kind of like it's that. It's like something way. like the fear of big words is also a big word. So it's like, <laughs> I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. What are you afraid of? I shouldn't say. <laughs> he who should not be named. I just shouldn't. <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> why did they do that? Why did they Yeah. What is the fear of heights called? Height of phobia. No. Big. Acrophobia. Oh. I didn't know that's what it was called. Arachnophobia and agoraphobia and acrophobia. I don't know if I have a phobia. There's nothing that like... Ooh, actually, look up. I really don't like um, children. Um, but in a certain, <laughs> like, like in a movie when there's like a possessed Fear little girl. of children. Um, it's called pedophobia. <laughs> oh, <laughs> which okay. I wish that they had made a different name for that. Yeah, like pedophobia is very, very. That sounds like you're afraid of pedophiles. <laughs> it does. <laughs> which I I can see why it's called that because like a pediatrician, pediatrics, all that stuff is all. But I don't like that. I. It's I, like wh what fear do you have? Pedophobia. You're a pedophile. <laughs> what? No, no. no I just, pedophobia. I just, yeah, I don't so like. You're afraid of pedophiles. <laughs> you're afraid. They're scary. I mean, they are scary. Uh, yeah, I don't like in movies when there's like a little possessed girl. It freaks me out so much. So it's like, come on, Danny, come and uh, play with us. Ah, it's awful. It's, I hate it. Ring around the rosy. I hate it. I want to point out that I don't think. People are as afraid of clowns as they say they are. I, I think that's bullshit. I think people like the idea of being afraid of clowns because they are they can be creepy. But I think it's gone so overboard that people are just like, yeah, I have a fear of clowns. <laughs> I'm so quirky. <laughs> yeah, I. now that you say that, I agree. I don't think that clowns are that creepy. Like, no. they're, they're unsettling and they're a little weird. Like, but, a, a clown standing outside your house in the dark is, like, creepy, but that would be anybody. <laughs> yeah, just a person standing outside of your house is creepy. Yeah. I think we should pick a different job at the circus to be afraid of, like a lion tamer in your Ooh. yard. Yeah, because if a man... Okay, if there's a clown standing at your front door looking menacing, that's creepy. Mm -hmm. If there's a lion tamer and he has a lion and he's standing at your front door... A lion which has been tamed, but you can't really that's scary. tame the beast, can you? And that's kind of the mo that's kind of the scariest part. Isn't it? Take the lion out of the Serengeti, but you can't take the Serengeti out of the lion. Mm -hmm. I have that Serengeti. tattooed across my chest. Yeah, with a big lion. <laughs> yeah, right on my abdomen. And when I flex, it like makes the face. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> when I don't flex, it doesn't look like anything. <laughs> it's just really messy. Should have seen. The amount of flexing I had to do to get the tattoo done. 
Oh, baby. Like that. I think that, just real quick, back to the balls, I think that that might be the <laughs> worst place to possibly get tattooed. The skin, so elastic. Yeah. How could you get anything done? And it's quite sensitive. Although, is it sensitive because there's a lot of hairs on there and they act like whiskers, so you know when something's coming? <laughs> or is it like, if all the hair... <laughs> <laughs> He can sense it. <laughs> he can tell the future. You can also find water with it. Yeah. Oh, that would be so cool. I think that uh, penises need more function. Like finding water. Like a dousing rod? <laughs> yeah. That would you need cool. two of them together, though. You need two of us, like, walk side by side. On the beep, beep. <laughs> dousing rods don't beep. Oh, yeah, no, but, you know. How would they... For the audio listeners. The audio listeners can't see me going like this. They have to... That's true. That's imagine. true. You got it. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would like that. Anyway, moving on, we have to talk about your skydiving experience. Yeah! I speaking forgot of about it. fear of heights. Speaking of fear of heights. Okay. How was it? It was, like, the coolest thing I've ever done. It was amazing. It was so cool. I I don't know. Okay, so I'm saying this with a grain of salt because um, I don't have a fear of heights. But when we were up in the plane and we were over the edge and I looked down, you're so high up that you can't, your brain like doesn't really compute. Can't see the distance. Yeah. Um, until you're lower in the ground and then you're in the parachute. And then I did have a point where I like looked down and I was like, uh, I don't really like that. I'm going to look up here now. Oh. <laughs> so I think that you would have a problem once the chute is pulled and you get closer mm. to the ground. Cause then it's like, okay, I can see detail though. But when you're up way up in the sky, we went up 14,000 feet, I believe. Um, and, uh, it was really cool. It was really, really, really cool. So, Hell yeah. I'll take you through the whole journey. I'll take you through it all. We get there. Um, did I explain why I was doing this in the last episode? I can't yes. remember. Yes. So we get there. Zach and Austin are there. As a reminder, they were doing a Zoom call uh, for this pitch meeting, and they wanted to jump out of a plane for it. Um, so we get there. We start signing all the waivers and stuff. And then we go into a room. We have to watch a quick video about how we just signed all of our rights away. Um, and if any of us die or get hurt, we can't sue them. Then well, they... if you're dead, you can't sue them anyway. Yeah, exactly. But your family also can't sue. Uh, oh. And then they, they take a video of you reading the thing of you signing your rights away and videotape you signing it. Which I was like, whoa, okay. Oh. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but... It's a little unsettling. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I, uh, we went out. Some guy was like, are you Ethan? And I was like, yep. And he's like, all right, your, uh, your guy is up jumping in the plane right now. He's going to jump out, come down, and then take you up. And I was like, okay. And so he's like, here, put this harness on. Well, he put the harness on me. Um, and that was all of the instructions that I got. <laughs> What? So, yeah, literally, I was told nothing else. So I overheard other people saying what to do because everybody else had their instructor. But my guy was still jumping out of the plane. Oh. So, so the plane lands. You can see the people falling from the sky with the parachutes. Everybody else mm -hmm. gets on the plane. And then I'm just standing there for like a good like five minutes just waiting for my waiting for my dude. Um, and he comes running over and he just like checks my stuff. Uh, and then he's like, all right, let's get on the plane. And I was like, okay. And then he's like, here, sit here. And he starts strapping himself to me. And then yeah. I was like, so when we jump, I just kind of like arch back. And he was like, oh yeah, did anyone tell you anything? And I was like, no, <laughs> not really. Like I overheard some stuff, but I, I didn't really, I wasn't told anything directly. And he was like, yeah, just like, when we jump out, just keep your head up and throw your head sort of back into my chest. <laughs> keep your chin up, slugger. Yeah. And he was like, and then I'll tap you and you can you can put your arms out. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, but the whole time, Weird. 
I I wasn't really nervous at all for some reason. I don't know why. Um, Psychopath. I, yeah, either that or like I didn't have enough time. I don't know. But I was like fine. I was like, okay, this is – we're good. It's whatever. Um, the plane takes off. We start – it's a teeny tiny – little plane and it's it's really weird because it's just two benches and everyone's just yeah. sitting on the bench and your guy straps himself to you uh and then it was also and he he told me this and i was like oh, okay thank god that's weird i was gonna bring this up all of my straps were super loose and i mm. felt weird about it and he was like once we are about to jump i'm gonna tighten everything but I'm going to make oh. it really tight so I don't want you to just sit here with it being super tight when I'm going to have to check the straps right before we jump anyway. And so mm -hmm. he was like, I'm just going to tighten everything right before we go. And I was like, okay, cool, because this shit was real loose. <laughs> um, but then we're just we're just up in the sky. We go up above the clouds. Uh, it was How long did it take to fly up there? It's probably like five minutes. The, the whole experience oh. was maybe 20 minutes um wow. if that so the the flight up was maybe five minutes the jump is you fall for 60 and then the chute gets pulled and then you are just floating down for like five to seven minutes depending um, oh, so you pull the chute way up yeah pretty pretty far up um huh. so well, kind of. So, there was a few things about it that I didn't expect that happened. So, <laughs> he's like, all right, we're going to be the first to go. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, Last in, first out, baby. Yep. And so, they have like a big door on like a big track. It looks like a mini garage door. And so, he like slides the thing up and there's mm -hmm. a little light on the side of the plane that goes from red to green. And so, it's like, all right, we got the green light. It's time to jump. And so, he's like, we're just going to scooch over to the edge. You're going to put your toes out of the plane. And then, we kind of like jumped out sideways. He's like, we're going to just sway back and mm. forth and go one, two, three. Um, and so, we scooch to the edge of the plane. All I see are the clouds, baby. I can't see oh. nothing. And That's kind of nice, actually, because you were telling me, as you were explaining it, my heart was beating real hard, and I was like, I'm getting sweaty. <laughs> yeah, well, it was wild, because we were, like, up above the clouds, and all I saw was the sun. And I was like, wow, we're we're really high up. We're in space. <laughs> oh, fuck it, it's space, baby. I can see the curvature. The Earth is round. <laughs> so we do the one, two, three, and then we jumped out of the plane. <laughs> Um, so there was a couple things that happened that I wasn't expecting. So the first thing that happened was because we jumped out sideways, we didn't just jump and go face first into the sky. We did a cool yeah. like barrel roll thing because we jumped out Ooh. sideways. So we did like a big like flippy spin thing, which was really cool. <laughs> Is that what he <laughs> called it? Oh, yeah. He was like, we're going to do a fucking flippy spin thing, and then maybe I'll pull Hell a shoot yeah. if I can find it. And I was like, sick, <laughs> man. Um, the other thing, and they told me this beforehand, but it, your stomach doesn't drop like a roller coaster or anything like that mm -hmm. because you're already in motion in the plane. Um, yeah. And so you're just jumping, and you just you feel like you're falling – but you don't get that. You know how, have you ever jumped off something high and then your legs start to go like, whoa? You try and like correct yourself as yeah. you're falling. Yeah. But because I guess you're just jumping and there's so much, you just, you're just falling. You're falling really fast. Um, so. They should call it sky falling. Yeah. Why is it sky falling? There's dive? no dive involved. Well, unless you're real cool and you, and you like put your arms together like a falcon and you're just. Making yourself a Ooh. bullet towards Earth. <laughs> See, that shit's cool if you're not doing a tandem thing and you learn how to do it. But then you're not. You're falling so quick then. So fast. It's like uh, it's it's over now. I don't know how far how fast you would fall if you were making yourself a little bullet. But uh, the guy said that 
um, you fall at about 120 miles an hour is how wow. fast you fall. Um, yeah, 200 kilometers an hour or 120 is human uh, terminal velocity. Mm -hmm. That's so, fast. It's very fast. So that was the other thing is in the little safety video, it was like you're going to fall for, you're going to be in free fall for 60 seconds and then the rest is blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, okay, cool. When you're falling out of the sky <laughs> at 120 miles an hour, 60 seconds feels really long. <laughs> like really, really, really long. And it was really cool. But there was a point near the end, like right before he pulled the chute, where I was like, he hasn't pulled the chute yet. <laughs> We're still falling. Like if you just count one, two, three... 60 seconds of just falling out of the sky. Like, it's a long time. Um, it's, it's one minute. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Um, it feels like forever. Uh, it, it's also really cold because, one, you're falling really yeah. fast, but also, you know, it's cold up there. And then he finally pulled the chute, and we went, <laughs> uh, and then we just started, we just started floating down. Um, and once the... Do you, do you, like, talk about something, or...? Yeah, so, he, he, well, first he was like, Hey, man, <laughs> how was that, huh? Mm. <laughs> and I went, man. How'd you rate my fall? <laughs> pretty sweet. He let me drive, which was pretty cool, and a little scary. He was like... He like, would... on the, on the, the kite handles? Yeah, I don't. I have no idea what they're called, but yeah, those things. He was like, "Put your hands here and here," and then he's like, "If you want to go left, just like pull it down to the left, and if you want to go right, you just pull it down to the right." And then he took my hand and pulled it all the way down until we started spiraling. And then he's like, oh, "All right," and God. slowly release. And that was a little, a little scary. Dude, if I did this, there would be nothing but a brown trail following me. <laughs> it was so cool. Um. Yeah, and then we just slowly floated back towards Earth. The sun was setting. It was beautiful. There were these wow. mountains that were, like, surrounding the airspace. And the sun was setting. And the the clouds were, like, kind of... There was a little bit of a fog by the mountains. So there were these huge god rays coming through the clouds and through the Fuck mountains. yeah. And it was like, oh, shit. Shit, this is sick. God's watching his favorite child do something so cool. It was so cool. It was fucking dope. And then we you just... sent me the the video of you landing. Yeah, <laughs> it was just... just you like feet forward and then sliding on your butt, and you just said, "Ah!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we come. We're like we're getting towards the ground, and it did. It was like a little awkward because we were slowly floating for like like five minutes or something. And I mm -hmm. didn't really know what to talk to him about. I was just like, wow, that was really cool. And he's just like, yep, pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> wow. Looks he's great like up here. Doing his, doing his fucking taxes on his Apple Watch as <laughs> yeah. you're falling. Um, I think it's interesting that at some point you're approaching the ground, but at a certain distance you're approaching Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the terminology shifts as you fall out of the plane, you're falling towards Earth. But then the closer you get, it's like, ah, it's just the ground. It's now. just the ground. It's just a little bit of dirt. Baby. Ground is just localized Earth. You ever think about that? That is so true, Sean. Groundbreaking, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not, because you would have died. I would have died. Because I always think about that. I'm like that guy who's like, yeah, if you fell out of a plane without a parachute, I'd figure out a way to survive. <laughs> I'd pull off my shirt and hold it in the air, or I would just spread myself so wide that I would hit the ground lightlier. Uh, there, there's <laughs> it's not even a word. <laughs> lightlier. There's people who have jumped out of planes and their parachute haven't, hasn't worked, and they still survive, and I don't understand how. Like, surely if you, like, land and, like, parkour, like, combat roll, like... Land on your feet and just roll out of it. It'll mm -hmm. take all the energy out of it. It's easy. Yeah. yeah. Your ankles might feel a little busted, but that'll heal. It's like better to have broken legs and shattered ankles and never walk again than it is to die. I guess so. Yeah. True. But if you roll correctly, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah. You know, get out of it. Just like, how, like when you hit the ground, do it like in like Bloodborne where you like roll right as you hit the ground. So you like get out of it quicker. Yeah. Or like... 
Once you hit the ground, do a little hop so you negate all of the impact. Yeah, so the, the energy goes back up into the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I hate that I will have said that and so many people in the comments will take me seriously. <laughs> yeah. In the last episode, we talked about having a kid makes you a bad parent if you still do YouTube. And yeah. so many people thought I was serious. <laughs> I'm like, you've watched me for 11 years. How do you not know what my sarcasm sounds like? You're just a bad guy, Sean. You're a bad man. I'm a um, bad, bad boy. So we, we approached Earth and uh or sorry the ground and he was like all right uh when we when we get over here you're just gonna sort of do like a little l sit you're just gonna keep your feet up and then mm -hmm. assume that you're just gonna slide it on your butt but if i tell you so you can put your feet down and then we'll just land standing up and kind of run out of it and i was like okay cool and then he didn't say anything so i kept my feet up and we just slid into home base Hell and yeah. i was on he the ground awful. Again. He slide? sounds like he didn't know what he was doing, or he did it so much and didn't care anymore. <laughs> I think he maybe did it so much that he didn't care anymore, because on the way up, and this made me feel better, so he used to be a world champion skydiver, which I don't know what that really means. But I was like, so how many jumps have you done? And everybody else uh, who was like the instructor or whatever had done between like 1,000 and like 3,000 jumps. Holy hell. And this man was like, yeah, this year will be my 24th year of skydiving. Um, oh, I just, my God. I just passed over 17,000 jumps. Dude, what at that nuts. point, you you live in the air. I know. At that point, you've spent more time in the sky than you have on the ground. And it made me, it made me feel so much better because I was like, all right, if you've done 17,000 jumps, the the chance of yeah. something going wrong here, I feel like is extremely low. Fucking crazy. Yeah. That's, that's for context for the movie uh, Mission Impossible that just came out last year. Mm-hmm. Tom Cruise did 500 skydives and 13,000 motocross jumps to practice that stunt. He did 13,000 motocross jumps? Yup. What the fuck? And then in the movie it happens and it's like, I've seen this too much that now when it happened I'm like, yeah, that's like, cool. Yeah, that's fine. That's pretty cool, I guess. It's, it's at some point that it's like, even if you're doing it real or you're not, your brain can't tell. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, here it comes, here comes the real jump. Yep. And he did it, and I was like, "Ah, you probably could have done that, to faked it." <laughs> yeah, but it's gonna really sell many tickets either, because you went up against Barbenheimer, so no one oh, really watched yeah, yeah. that Mission Impossible. I didn't even see it. Was it good? Was it? Fun? I like the Mission Impossible movies. Let's see how much money it made. I feel like they should be making billions of dollars per movie. That's who I'm named after, kind of, a little. I've talked about Tom that. Tom Cruise? Uh, Ethan Hunt? Tom Cruise would have been cooler. Ah, no, one's a spy, <laughs> the other one's a Scientologist. Scientologist. I don't know. <laughs> How much uh, money? It made $500 million at the box office, but it cost more than half of that to make it. So, damn. What are you going to do? Oh, well. Meanwhile, Oppenheimer and Barbie are pulling in billion dollar movie budget or movie rankings, and then he's probably over in the corner, like kicking dust, like, fuck, man. God, what? They're also doing a Top Gun 3. Are, why? I don't know. The last it, one was like so good and it feels like, yeah, you came back after like 20 years, whatever it was, and then yeah. you did it. And it awesome. But now it, but the technology had shifted so much that he was like, I'm only going to come back if we have something worth doing. Yeah. And I was like, now you're going to do another one? Just for the fun of it, because the last one did really well. I, I mean, I guess you learned a lot of stuff, so maybe it'll look cooler, but... Oh, he better eject out of a plane. He better oh, do a real for ejection. Real? Which I found out that Top Gun, despite all its talks about practical effects, most of that movie is CG. I thought the Mo whole thing every, was... Every single plane you see in that movie is basically a blank plane that they've put another plane over. So they just had, like, tracking dots or whatever on a plane. And then just put the body as a... Because the, the jets that follow them at the end don't actually exist. Mm -hmm. The ones that they escape in doesn't fly anymore. And the ones that they were doing the regular stuff in, I can't remember 
why? But they just had big blank gray jets. And but then are they actual jets? Yeah, they're actually in a plane and they're actually flying around. Like all the shots of them in it are whatever. But like some of the cockpit stuff, and I think so, mo all of the shots of the outside of the planes are all VFX. Which is kind of weird, because people are like, there's no CG in this movie. It's like, yeah, but there's a lot of VFX in it. Wait, so is the footage from inside the cockpit fake? No, no, no. I think that's real. I think it's the exterior shots of the planes are also real, but they are they have another plane's body comped over it. Oh, weird. Why? Why wouldn't they just use a plane? Like the I don't thing? know. I don't understand. I don't under I I watched some guy talk about it on YouTube. Maybe he's lying to me. Hmm. Someone's lying to you. Maybe it's all bullshit. Maybe the guy's lying. Anyway, look up the video. Top Gun is a lie. They just say that shit so they'll sell the movie better. It's like we didn't use any VFX for Oppenheimer. It's like maybe you should have. <laughs> you could could have created like a really cool nuclear explosion if you did. The one that's in the movie is like, eh. Yeah. I mean, I saw it twice that time we went together was the second time I watched it. And I was like, yeah, this is good. Cinematography's great. Color grading's nice. The acting is like some of the best you'll ever see. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't really want to watch this again. The Yeah. Well, how was it the second time around? It was fine. It was cool seeing it, seeing it in 70 mil. Yeah. I think that added a whole lot more. And the fact that... When I saw it the first time, it was just a regular cinema screen mm -hmm. and regular, like, speakers, but then going to see it in, like, IMAX with that... I, I have my qu my quabbles about IMAX and how overly loud it is, but mm -hmm. it is still pretty cool. Yeah. But it's not... It's not really the type... It is cool to see someone use IMAX to do, like, portraiture, mm -hmm. like, character acting, but I also feel like it doesn't really add... This is going to get all the cinephiles up in arms. It doesn't add as much as you would expect. No, I agree. It's nice to see the blemishes on the film, but at the same time, I don't think... I don't think that alone is worth it. It also seems so hard to work with IMAX cameras because yeah. I think you've seen the, the behind-the-scenes photos. They're obscenely loud. They're yeah. super, super, super loud. Um, so you can't really do any dialogue with it. So yeah, it, it's cool. And it's cool that someone like filmed the whole movie like that. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if that's the movie to film everything in IMAX. Or maybe it is because IMAX is so unwieldy mm -hmm. that all you can really do is movies like that where you don't have to coordinate stunts or anything. Yeah. Next, I don't know. Next I, podcast will be shot on IMAX, by the way. Just letting Hell you all know. Hell yeah. Just letting you all, I, all know. I think it's surprising that that movie's shot on IMAX, which is an obscenely expensive camera. And then you have something like The Creator by Gareth... What's his second name? Walsh? No. Uh, I can't remember. Gareth Edwards? Mm -hmm. What the... The guy who did Godzilla, and he filmed it on a tiny little like Sony FX3. It was an FX3, which is the camera that I am using right now. Yeah. Um, so technically, your camera mm -hmm. is IMAX capable. Mm -hmm. Wait, IMAX capable? I think that's what he said. I think it's no. Gareth Edwards. Yeah. It wasn't IMAX, was it? Doesn't it have to be shot on an IMAX camera to be IMAX? I don't know. I can't or remember. It gets converted to IMAX? I have no idea. Yeah, an IMAX movie shot entirely on the Sony FX3. Whoa. I mean, that's the thing, is that IMAX is the format that it ends up as, but yeah. not the format it's filmed as all the time. Oh, I thought that it had to be filmed on an IMAX camera for it to be considered IMAX. I don't yeah. know. Um, I think a lot of IMAX stuff is overhyped. I There's an ending to, to my skydiving story. We didn't just land, and it was done. So, oh. if you remember... The whole reason I got roped into this was because Zach, uh, and again, Zach and Austin are the guys who did my documentary. So they were like, we are doing this pitch for a movie, and we want to jump out of the plane for the Zoom call. So 
Austin was on the ground. They set up a tent in the airfield where everybody was landing. And Zach came up in the plane. Okay? So, oh, I see. So the plan was they their call was at like 4.30. And so the plane takes off at uh, at 4.30. So the plan mm. was for Zach to be late. And Austin to get on the call and be like, hey, guys, sorry. Um, it's just going to be a couple minutes. Zach is running late. And so he was going to be inside the tent. It was just a black tent. So on the webcam, it just looks like a black background. Mm -hmm. So the the plan was for Zach to jump out of the plane. And he had strapped to his wrist his, his phone. And at around like 4,000 feet, cell signal comes back. So he was going to come back on the Zoom call. Oh at 4,000 feet and l come into the Zoom call. And then Austin was going to come out of the tent with his laptop and show him landing. And then they were just going to take the rest of the Zoom call. So we go up in the air. We're all, we're all jumping. I land on the ground. And I see the plane going back the other way. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, what are they doing uh and he's like oh they're doing another pass so zach can like stall a little bit longer and so i finally see him jump out of the plane and they're slowly coming down zach lands <laughs> zach lands on the ground he unbuckles and he's like the guy didn't show up for the skull <laughs> oh my god <laughs> not 30 seconds after the guy finally gets on the call. <laughs> like 30 that seconds. That fucking sucks. <laughs> like 30 seconds after he lands. <laughs> and it was like, it was, it was like 40% funny, 60% unfortunate. Because it was like, damn, that is kind of funny that he, he logs on and he was super apologetic. He was like, guys, I'm so sorry. My last meeting went long and I couldn't get out of it. And then they were like, that's really funny. Zach just jumped out of a plane. Um, and I guess their meeting went very well. But yeah, he he was at least the commitment. You can say the commitment is there. Mm -hmm. It would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. But literally, like thirty seconds after he lands, the guy f gets on the on the Zoom call. So funny! So Who is this guy? Funny. We need to beat him up. I have no idea. Um, that fucking sucks. Actually, I do have an idea. I'll tell you after the podcast. Um, okay. But yeah, it's really, JJ Abrams. <laughs> yep. It was it was Mr. Abrams himself. He fucked it up. He was late to the Zoom call. Too busy making That's Star kind Trek. Of, that, in hindsight, I keep thinking, like, I guess that should have been obvious that someone who's in the film industry was late to a Zoom call. Because mm -hmm. anybody I've talked to who's higher up who you're, like, pitching shit to uh -huh. are always, like, like main character syndrome. They're mm -hmm. always the ones who are like, sorry, I'm late. Just so many projects going on. Yeah. Um... This is very well. Very funny. I'm glad it went well for them, regardless. Yeah. No, and it was. A, it's kind of a funny. Blows thing. massive ass. Yeah, and then well, the funny thing was so like the whole point of doing that obviously was to show Zach falling out of the sky, blah 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 blah. But then they just had to take the whole Zoom call from a tent in the middle of the yeah. airfield. <laughs> <laughs> just really funny. It was like doing the Zoom call in the air and him being in the tent is like, yeah, fun. But then when you're not doing it, it's like, should have just taken this at home. Yeah. Yeah. At least we all got to jump out of the plane. That was that was cool and fun. That's true. It's still an experience you uh, got. Yeah. Very, very funny, though. Very, very funny. Who was, who was the most scared of it? Um... So Jocelyn, out of the people who did it, Jocelyn also jumped. So I would say that Jocelyn was probably the most scared of everyone, but she wasn't mm. really all that scared. Like she didn't look super scared. She said she was nervous, and then <laughs> Jocelyn, you okay? Fine, <laughs> fucking fine. Don't talk to I'm me. I'm ready. Um, but yeah, after she landed, I asked her what she thought, and she was like, "That was awesome. I would absolutely do that again." Um, mm. so I so I would recommend it to anybody.
at some point in my life, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just not in a rush to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that that was maybe the reason why I wasn't nervous was because I was asked the day before. So there wasn't mm. time for me to ruminate on it. There wasn't time for me to just sit and think about all the stuff that could happen if I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to go skydiving for the first time in a week. Um yeah, if we planned it, like, way in advance, it's like, oh, I don't want it to happen. Yeah, then you just see it coming up, just like the Earth I'm, when you're falling. I'm going to Google a morbid fact. Mm -hmm. Go for it. How many people die skydiving? I think it's um, Information provided by the United States Parachute Association indicates there's been a total of 486 deaths. From 2000 to 2021, this comes to 22 deaths a year. Mm. That's higher than I would have thought. That I thought I was going to say like three. That is higher than I would think as well. But here's... But I, I also want to know the level of professionalism to death ratio. Like are the people who are dying are the people who went to like... Like bumfuck nowhere in Arkansas, and then it's just like some dude with like a helicopter in his shed, and he's like, "Yeah, the parachutes are actually just plastic bags." So where are you? I don't know if we're getting our information from the same place, but you said twenty-two deaths a year. Yeah, I just googled it, and that was the first thing that showed up at the top. And I looked up how many people skydive a year. Uh, according mm. to the United States Parachute Association, approximately 2.5 to 3 million jumps occur annually. Wow. So, that's pretty... Those are those are pretty solid numbers in your favor. Yeah. I was trying to look up the percentage of that, but I just realized that I don't know how to do percentages. I don't remember either. <laughs> <laughs> I was streaming um, the other day and we were talking about IQ um, and my chat was like, you should take an IQ test right now. And I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to be embarrassed. You, the first like failure is taking the test. That shows you have a low IQ. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I just, I'm, I'm not subjecting myself to that. Did you do it? do it? No. No, I didn't. We should do an IQ test. We... A, a combined IQ test. We could we could do it for the next episode. We could do an IQ test. Yeah, that's true. See and then everybody at home has to take it with us at the same time, and then everyone has to post the results. Yes. I like that idea. I I don't think I have... I think I have a very average IQ. I think I'm very smart about certain things, but... I guess that's anybody. Like, whatever you're into, you, like, know a lot about. When it comes to video games, actors, and movies, and sound, all over it. But when it comes to, like, my spatial reasoning's okay, but when it comes to, like, actual, like, math, you would swear I am still in the ocean as a single-celled organism. I, for the video that I posted on Christmas, I was forced into doing multiplication um, from from K to five, <laughs> uh, the yeah, from kindergarten to fifth grade was was, was what like, my math was. I didn't even understand what K uh, to five was, and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, kindergarten to fifth grade multiplication. Which you're not. Who's doing multiplication in kindergarten? Nobody. Uh, yeah, it was that I, it was fucking tough. generation of being like, you're never going to have a calculator in your pocket all the time. It's like, bitch. I have a computer have, that's stronger than the computer in our school in my pocket all the time now. I have all of the information that we've ever learned all the time. Yeah, I don't Shut need up. to learn things. I can just Google it. Exactly. You fucking dumb bitch. I didn't say that to her. I said it in my head, exactly. though. Exactly. Well, let's, uh, let's take that nugget and extrapolate out on it because I have a grievance that I would like to share right now. A grievance? Okay. Not with you, mm -hmm. but with YouTube. Okay. Because I just went to YouTube to be like, is it my internet? And then stuff loaded kind of slow and I was like, oh, maybe. But YouTube have been slowing everyone's speeds who have ad blockers installed. Mm-hmm. And it's fucking bullshit. 
They brought out that thing where they were like, after three videos, you're going to get a thing saying like, oh, you have an ad blocker installed, uninstall it to continue using YouTube. But I have YouTube Premium, mm -hmm. and it still slows it down just because I have an ad blocker installed. That is some bullshit. You have an ad blocker and you're not even... Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, fucking bullshit. Get your shit together, YouTube. You it's been, greedy bastards. It's just been in the last, like, week or so that that's been happening too, right? That it's been yeah, slowing shit down. We've had bad internet here. Turns out the place that our internet is connected to before it goes to the main area uh, had a fire in it. Oh, good. So everything burned down. And now they're like, we can't get to it yet because we have to investigate if it's arson or not. And I was like, can I please download some video games? <laughs> please, I need the internet. I I hope everyone's okay, but yeah, our internet was like slow, so I was like, oh, it's just that, but then more and more people were talking about it, and it turns out, no, it's not just that, it's fucking garbage. It's YouTube as a platform, as a whole. They suck. I don't know why they're doing it, greedy bastards. You're, you make so much fucking goddamn money. You take 55% of our revenue all the fucking time, every single month, and yet you're going to come out and fucking... Block people from using ad blockers, you greedy fucks. You know, people don't talk about that. They talk about it on Twitch all the time of, oh, Twitch takes 50%. Oh, blah, 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 blah. No one's ever brought up how YouTube takes 55% off the fucking yeah. cuff. They also take the 50%. It's bullshit. Let's unionize. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, because that might backfire on us. I don't know what it takes to have a union, and I don't know if unionization would kill the YouTuber economy or bolster it. <laughs> I don't know. I... But we should rise up with pitchforks outside the headquarters. Yes, that is a good solution. That is a good I solution. think that's much better. Much better. Imagine you unionize, and then it's like, well, now we can't actually... Uh, have you be YouTubers anymore because it increases lawsuit risk for us, so we'd be Sorry. way more liable for you if there's a union We're and we can't have that, so all YouTubers have to stop. We're disabling monetization across the board. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, sorry, you uh, killed the platform. But ads are still going to run, and we'll just pocket 100% now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Which, not a single YouTuber would continue to upload. I mean, some would. Mm -hmm. I would upload here and there, but... I was going to say, at the frequency I do now, which is zero. <laughs> which is here and there. <laughs> uh, all of January, it's like a desert out there. Oh, guys. Yeah. It's Fuck rough out. Guys. It's rough out here in January. I just started my new schedule, and I've been so consistent. And woof, I can't wait for January to be over. It's like three times the videos, 5% of the money. <laughs> it's rough. It is rough out here in january it's not even that because december is always really high it's not even like oh it's it just dropped a lot from december it just drops a lot compared to everything mm -hmm. like every other month january is absolutely the worst yeah it's abysmal it's horrific um so if anybody else out there is doing youtube or streaming or anything like that and you're like whoa my ad rev is so low that's completely normal january is always yeah. horrific it's always so bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty awful. And that's not why I haven't been uploading. I'm not in it just for the money before people point it out. Yeah, Sean. We January's just a slow-ass month. There's no games. I also didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. You're recovering from the holidays. Yeah. 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 Just figuring things out. Oh, just, trying to, just trying to coalesce with my, my, uh, my aura, you know? I forgive you. Just trying to feel out the aura. If I had an aura color, what color do you think it would be? Ah, uh, well, man, my my brain immediately jumps to green, and I think that that's kind of a cop out. Yeah, mine jumps to blue for you. If you had an aura, I actually think you're yellow. Yellow. Okay. I think you're bright and cheerful and energetic. <laughs> and I think that that's what yellow is. That's so nice. Wow. Also, I can't look directly at you. <laughs> <laughs> or else I'll go blind. <laughs> mm, what color are you? Hmm. Talk a little bit. Say something. Say something. Hello. Uh, my name's Sean. I come from Ireland. Uh, you can't tell anymore because my accent is kind of fucked. But hey, that's me. 
I still, I, I still, I'm brown. I'm still getting kind of a green. Mm. I'll take green. I mean, it's bright. It's it's bouncy. It's healthy. Mm -hmm. It's the color of like vibrant earth. Mm -hmm. Color of money, dude. Oh, so hell yeah! If we can roll in that green, <laughs> well, it's only the color of money in America. <laughs> That's true. Anybody ever think about that? How you hear like all oh, rolling in like the green, like the green's coming in. It's like in Ireland we had like purple money and red. You purple money? Yeah, I think like a 20 euro note is like has purple in it. That's dope. Look up 20 euro note. 20 euro. Yeah, it's like uh, it's it's blue. It's not purple. Oh uh, yeah. It's kind of purpley though. That's pretty Yeah, sweet. it's a darker blue. It has shades of purple in it, but Mm -hmm. Um, I unless I have a question for you, Sean. Sure. What was so in the last episode we talked about um how a bunch of YouTubers are retiring and we talked about how Matt Pat is mm -hmm. stepping down. It's all over. There was so many people that were speculating that you're quitting now because I <sighs> saw it everywhere. And like yeah. even like Dexerto because you tweeted like I've been doing YouTube they'll for a third fucking, of my life. They'll make an article about anything. They Jack really guy found a fucking piece of chewing gum in his ass. <laughs> Dexerto reports. <laughs> if you're getting your news from Dexerto, everyone should unfollow Dexerto. Fuck yeah, them. I they made like articles about me in the past and they had so much information wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dexerto does suck. Anyway. Yeah, what what were your thoughts on that? What what were your thoughts when you saw everybody tweeting about like, oh, he's retiring, or oh, blah, blah, or even just like, don't? Did it make you feel nice? I I mean, it is nice to see people, uh, like say, don't go, don't leave, we mm -hmm. we miss you. But for me, it was more a case of, I mean. I tweeted that knowing that people would have that reaction. You don't tweet it and then go like, oh, whoops, people whoops. thought I was quitting. Like, obviously, I did it for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, I, did, I just didn't expect everyone to be so, like, serious about it and, like, take it at face value and actually think that that was me announcing that I'm going to quit. Mm -hmm. um, but it was nice to see a lot of people still enjoy my stuff. I'm convinced that no one likes me anymore. Mm. And I think that's just imposter syndrome and ADHD and anxieties in general. Yeah, I'm the same. Where you convince yourself that people don't like you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And also, I never really talked about it before. I kind of want to do a video at some point before I come back where I'm like a bit more honest about my feelings about my ent entire career. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of talk. Uh, for years, it was like I was like hyper. I was energetic. I was like the forefront of that style of YouTubing. Mm -hmm. And then when you start off and a couple of people are like, man, he's way too energetic. He's kind of annoying. Like views and positivity and everything are all rolling in that it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But then after a while, you kind of become numb to that stuff. And it was like, I just, just over 11 years of people telling me that I'm annoying or I talk too loud or my accent sucks or I act like a child. Like, I, I didn't realize how much that shit actually got into my brain and yeah. fucked me up. And I'm like, man, I can't, I don't feel like I can be myself anymore because even though it's such a tiny fraction of the, of people who are watching me that say it, mm -hmm. like that just wore me down over the years and kind of like crushed my soul. And now it's like, I feel like I lost my excitability over the years mm -hmm. and just like spiraled a bit downwards without realizing it. Yeah. I... I share a similar thing with my intelligence because there, mm. it was the bit for such a long time that I was kind of like the dumb one. Um, yeah. And I just got babied for such a long time that it just kind of like ruined my confidence for a while. Mm. Um, it's not, it's not fun. And it's like, it's part of the job, I guess. And like whatever, but it's, that doesn't mean that it doesn't still have an effect and make you feel like shit. Yeah. And as much as like a lot of that stuff is just water off a duck's back. But after a while, I think I just got convinced. Well, as well as like other factors that happened with like people behind the scenes that 
I'm, I'm never going to be able to talk about because <laughs> I think that's another thing is that you can't ever be like fully honest because mm -hmm. it'll just drum up a whole bunch of shit that no one needs. Mm -hmm. um, but stuff in the background also kind of like shattered my confidence. And then after a while, it's like, who am I? And like yeah. a lot of people are like, I miss when he did that. And I'm like, yeah, I do too. Like, I, I don't know how to get back to that. I don't know how to like flip that switch to just be me again because I don't know what that is anymore. Yeah. And I think that that kind of sucks that I'm like, like I have the energy and the motivation to want to do stuff, but then, I don't know, after doing it for so long, I feel like I've kind of been worn thin and mm -hmm. I'm a very, I'm a very sensitive person anyway. I kind of wear my heart, my sleeve mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm pretty empathetic towards what other people say. So if they say it, I'll like feel it immediately, mm -hmm. even if it's true or not, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, I think that that would be good for you to make a video just being completely honest about your feelings because I think that a lot of times people just think that like oh you're a big YouTuber so you're doing great and you love what you do yeah um, and then I've also just taken so many breaks and I talk about that shit so much in the past I'm like that's just a broken record that people are sick of hearing that kind of stuff from me mm -hmm. um, I don't know it's an interesting space to be in. I wish I wish I sometimes had that brain where I could be a bit more egotistical where like you not to the point where I think I'm hot shit or anything, but just enough to kind of like get past that. Mm -hmm. To kind of like when you're recording stuff to like get out of your own head about it. Like if you want to do something, you just do it because you think it'll be fun for the video. Yeah. Instead of jumping through all the hoops in your brain first and then you say it and then it's like, OK, that was fine. Yeah. Yeah, just building that um, confidence back up. I mean, that's why it's my word for the year. Confidence. Confidence. Can you hear Spencer Barton? I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's one of those things that, like, I don't blame the audience for being the way they are. Mm -hmm. I, th I do think over the years, audiences have gotten um, more aggressive and entitled. Yeah. There's, uh, like... When people were talking about me retiring or other YouTubers retiring, I saw a couple of things on Reddit where people were like, oh, I think Jacksepticeye's got to be next. And you always get the people who are like, oh, good, I haven't watched him in years anyway. And it's like, that stuff doesn't really bother me because it's not like whatever personal taste is, yeah. whatever you want it to be. Um, well, some people were just saying things that aren't true or yeah. like he does this and that now. I'm like, that's not entirely accurate. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just kind of hard to see stuff about you that like people make up excuses for you. And I'm like, that's not true at all. But for some reason, that's like out there as like agreed upon yeah. by people. I'm like, that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, it sucks when people make assumptions about you and just are just like, this is the way that it is. And it's like, that's actually not true at all. Thanks, though. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Like, I don't really blame the audience. Oh, I was going to say that. Um, before I lost my train of thought that somebody was saying that, oh, he used to be so good, but now he gets to games like a day or two after everyone else. And I'm like, sure, but it also used to be a thing like for the entirety of us doing YouTube, it's like people have always done the same things as one another. Yeah. We've all done the same games as one another. And before it was like, oh, it's cool to see that person play it. Now I want to see that person play it and I want to see you play it. Mm -hmm. But now it kind of feels like people's mentalities are whoever gets to it first gets the lion's share. And then everybody else is like, now you're just copying that person or you're slow or you're late to the game. So I feel like yeah. everyone talks about YouTubers and YouTube changing, but very few people talk about how internet etiquette has changed over mm -hmm. the years and how people are, I think they're a bit more entitled than they've ever been. And I don't want to come off as negative because I still like doing all of this stuff, but... Yeah. I've just noticed that no one's really bringing up that side of it. No, I I agree. I think that sometimes people think that they're owed certain things. And it's just mm -hmm. like, why why do you think that? And also, like, why am I not allowed to just go at my, my own pace? Um, yeah. It's, it's fine that other people are doing more or less. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't put those people's standards on someone else. Yeah. And again, I don't really blame the audience for being that way either because they... It's just the way the internet has gone. It's the way trends have changed. It's the way that, like, there's so many pe more people doing it. Video services are all 
like on demand and binge culture is bigger now. Mm -hmm. Um, And people saying certain things about me or not liking it or wishing I'd upload more, like all of that stuff I totally get. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just the way it is. But it's it's a thing that you kind of have to reconcile in your brain and kind of like figure out how to be okay with certain things. Yeah. And I think that that's what I struggle with the most at the moment. You'd think doing it for 11 years, you'd be sort of like immune to it or you'd have figured things out a bit more. And I'm like, no. And and then MatPat's like retirement video. That's why it it was kind of like a sigh of relief to be like hearing him talk about it. I'm like, okay, it's not just me. He mm-hmm. He's the one who had it figured out. He like gamed the algorithm. He knows how YouTube works. He's worked with YouTube mm-hmm. to talk about this stuff and all of their content, the biggest of year of their channels. Mm-hmm. and all of the content slaps and they know exactly how to title thumbnail organize it format it and even he was like i, I can't do it anymore it's too much yeah and like that that in the middle of everything gave me relief to be like okay i'm not the only one struggling to do this kind of stuff mm-hmm. yeah doing it for as long as we have like it's it's a lot um and especially being people who've been here not since the beginning beginning, but have seen so many different like sides of YouTube and have had to yeah. adapt so much over the years. Like it's it's really hard. Um and it's I think it's it's hard to not have those feelings of like, am I just not good at this anymore? Like Yeah. I feel so like self conscious sometimes. I just wanna keep doing it the way I've always done it and have that work to a certain extent obviously we're not chasing trends and we're not doing stuff like feeding into the algorithm the way you could be Mm -hmm. but at the same time i'm like can i just still have fun it feels like you can't just have fun on youtube anymore yeah or if if you are just having fun you have to reconcile the fact that your stuff probably won't go as viral anymore as a result yeah um it's just a weird space to be in. Mm-hmm. It's like for years it was like, if you want to become a YouTuber, yeah, do it. Like do whatever you want. Do what's, what you're passionate about. And nowadays it kind of feels like it's harder to recommend it to people. Yeah. Like you have to go in with a game plan and you have to be ready for it. You have to, I don't know, maybe I'm talking out of my ass. Maybe you don't need any of that stuff. No, I agree though, because if if somebody were to come to me and be like, would you recommend doing YouTube? Like, if I could make this my job, I would be like, ah, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. Like, maybe. You have to kind depends of Depends on what you certain, want to get out of it. Yeah, depends on what you want to get, and it depends on, like, what kind of person you are. Because it's just like, I don't know, it's taken over. It, it is my entire life. Um, yeah. It's, it's tough sometimes. But, hey, we're still here. Shows that it's still fun to do. Yeah. I think I think for this year I've started to I think over the years I've gotten a bit jaded about it because you kind of like see how it works you see behind the scenes you meet mm-hmm. the people other YouTubers like people behind the scenes and it all it's all more cynical than it seems on the surface yeah um, and it's a lot more cutthroat and all about like the business side of it whenever you talk to people behind the scenes yeah. more so than it is about the creativity behind it. So I think that I've had a hard time reconciling with as well and kind of separating it out and just kind of like, well, fuck all that. I can just do my own thing and it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I want to get better about that and not being so miserable about it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to be at a point where I'm just sort of a bit more cheerful (laughs) about everything. I don't know. I, I don't oh, like simple. that the magic and the wonder and the fun of YouTube is kind of like r- worn off on me because mm-hmm. I don't think it has to. I think I kind of like let that happen to myself. Yeah. Yeah. I want to just be having fun again. Yeah. And you and I should make some fun videos this year. Next time we're together. We have a video coming out soon. It should be out. Well, I say this weekend, but last weekend from this video, I have the video. Now I just need to upload it cool hell yeah it's a fun one yeah very very fun it's been a long time coming been a long time coming. Um, it's a fun one hope y'all enjoy well thank you guys for watching this episode listening to this episode uh feeling this episode yeah well, there's... for all the people out there on Fieldcast, feeling the haptics of the episode oh man that'd be sick. i want to see the sound wave of the episode and what part is the coolest <laughs> yeah how does how does it feel 
Mm. How does how does this podcast make you feel? Hmm. Let us know. I don't know if I want to know that. <laughs> anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Brain leak.